Hi everyone and welcome to another out and about video. Today we've come back to Calf Hay Reservoir to do a follow up story to the Ernest Rodwell one which we covered and released about two weeks ago. Um, when I say a follow up story it's basically going to be a bit more paranormal if you will and we're going to use the dowsing rods to try and hopefully pick up the spirits of young Ernest because for those who watch the video obviously you'll know my thoughts on it and how I think something suspicious happened uh, back in May 1930. Um, I personally think this young lad was murdered here he was drowned here um, but the police gave it as accidental drowning of all things suicide basically but uh, I've always said that this case has intrigued me and we would come back at some point now like I said it was about two weeks ago I'll put links down below uh, for you guys to go and watch the video if you haven't already done so but yeah um, this will be more of a dowsing rod um, video today and um, we're going to try and ask ask the rods um, some questions based on the earnest story and you never know um, if we get something we get something if we don't we don't but you know like I said people have watched the videos before and we've just recently started getting into the dowsing rods I find them fascinating and we have had some interesting results so without further ado we're going to make our way around the reservoir now and then we'll do some questioning with the rods now one thing I've never seen all the years of living in Haslinden Helmshore is Cafe Reservoir this empty I mean this is this is seriously low but it gives us the chance to check out obviously the original features of it I mean when it was built back in the 1850s but uh, just look at it absolutely drained and we'll, we've only had a couple of days of warm weather but uh, it's crazy to see this today so we're here at Cafe Reservoir so the thing I'm going to do first is obviously ask the rods for yes no and possibly maybe answers so as we always do can you please move the rods for a yes answer, a yes reply. So they've opened up straight away, so we'll take that as a yes. Can we now move the rods please for a no answer or a no reply? Can you close the rods for a no answer, no reply? All right, so they have closed. Yeah. And for a maybe or yeah, for a maybe answer, can you move the rods in an alternative direction? For a maybe or an unsure, an unsure. So it's, moved, it's done what it did last time, it's moved the right one to the right and the left one stayed. So just to confirm, can you please move the rods for a yes answer? I like to ask twice. Can you please move the rods for a no answer or a no reply? So they've crossed. And finally, for a maybe, for a maybe or an unsure, an unsure answer, can you move the rods in a certain direction, please, to confirm? And again, the right one has moved slightly to the, or to the right. So we've got our three replies. Rods, can I ask, is this the location where young Ernest Rodwell sadly lost his life in 1930, yes or no? So the rods have opened for a yes. Was Ernest Rod Rodwell 17 years old on his death? We know Ernest Rodwell was found in the reservoir to my right, Cafe Reservoir. But can you please point the rods in the direction of the embankment where his glasses and his cap was found? Which embankment were they found on? Can you please move the rods in the direction? They're pointing in that direction over there, which we kind of thought. Just don't turn the camera that way, Vic. Just where their rods are. Keep going right round. Right round. Go. Straight face, straight over there where the two people are. That's where the rods are pointed. 
Jacko, that in the story we did with Ernest Rodwell, the actual, we thought, we thought young Ernest would have been in that, that, that direction. We basically presume that Ernest would have made his way to this side of the reservoir because it's all grassland and flatland. So we'll make our way over there now and we'll ask the rod some more questions and hopefully, like I say, we can actually get more responses from them because it is a fascinating case and if the rods do work, obviously we might be able to get to the bottom of what happened back in May 1930. So we're back on the other side now of the embankment. So I'm going to ask the rods again now to give us more definite proof of where we think or where hopefully the rods will prove where young Ernest cap and spectacles were found. Because let's not forget, on the day, um, like I said, his items of clothing were found, it was a James K who found them. Um, now, Ernest used to have a bike. His bike wasn't there, just his glasses and his cap. Right, we're going to stand here a bit. I just want to see if the rods... I'm not trying to trick the rods in any way whatsoever. I'm just basically wanting them to confirm. So I'm going to ask the rods again. Can you please point to the direction where Ernest Rodwell's possessions were found by Mr. James Cl uh, James K. So if I rods, can you please point to the direction where? Ernest's possessions were found straight away exactly where we thought can you, can you just line the camera up with the rods and they're just literally pointing in that direction I'll take the camera off you mm -hmm. so they're, they're pointing just where this danger deep drop sign is just to the left of that in between the cutting if you will the hills the trees the end of the trees that is where we think and we thought this at the time where Ernest would have probably dropped his bike and maybe sat on the the verges maybe on the day of his death because there's no spillway there's no walls there's no boundary walls so he's got clear access from there in to the reservoir and the, the rods have literally just pointed in that direction so for for context the rods have brought us from the center of the reservoir where we started and they pointed in this direction all the way around this pathway to there and we're going to make our way there now and hopefully we'll get some answers once we get there so i'm going to ask the rods once again can you please point us in the direction of where ernest's possessions were found by mr k so now if you point the camera of it you'll see that this it's pretty it, well it would have been a lot more flat at the time there's no walls there's no boundary walls so this kind of does have a good feel about it because it's easy access into the reservoir back in the day isn't it mm -hmm. like i say you've no wall you've got a big spillway down the side there so we want to put his bike this kind of feels like this is on the money isn't it so just just ask again yeah, just we'll go a different direction so i'm slightly away can you please point the rods again to where Ernest's possessions were found by Mr. K? So again, they kind of, yeah, so they've kind of pointed in that direction. Now, unfortunately, obviously, we're not going to be able to get across it because if you look on the ground, you'll see there is a bit of water now. So we're not going to be able to actually get to where we think the exact place was of his possessions but we do have a gut feeling now that this this is probably where Ernest walked um, that afternoon and ultimately obviously to his death what I might do is call out now and ask questions which I think we all want to know and that is did he take his own life or was he murdered so the question that I now need to ask is Ernest, if you're with us, if your spirit is with us now can you please move the rods for a yes answer? Well, they have opened just to confirm, if Ernest is with us or the spirit of Ernest is with us in some form, his energy can you please move the rods for a yes answer? only slightly but yeah I mean they've opened right Ernest can I ask you please 
Did you commit suicide, yes or no? Did you commit suicide, yes or no? Is it the cross now? Yes or no. Just to clarify, Ernest, did you commit suicide? Did you take your own life, yes or no? It's ever so slightly, isn't it? Ernest, were you therefore murdered, yes or no? Were you murdered? Yes or no? It's only ever so slightly, but yeah, look. Again, Ernest, were you murdered back in May 1930, yes or no? Right, so there we go. So uh, if Ernest is with us, He's telling us he um, he was murdered. So I'm gonna ask again, Ernest. If you're still with us, can you please give me a yes answer? Right, he's with us. Ernest, to confirm, did you take your own life, yes or no? That's an instant no, isn't it? Mm -hmm. And Ernest. Were you murdered somewhere near this spot? Yes or no? Yeah. Ernest, can you please move the rods to where your body was placed? Which is in the reservoir. Which is in the reservoir. Right, so again, he was murdered, and we do know for a fact that he was found floating. Well, not floating, I should say. He, he, um, poor Ernest had a rock tied around his neck. Uh, I'm going to ask some more questions about the rock um, when people have passed us, because like I said, it's quite a busy place, is this? So, if the rods are to be believed, and my gut feeling has always been, Ernest, he never took his own life, um, and that there was more foul play that went on here, uh, then the rods have given us the answer, and if Ernest is with us, um, and his energy is following us around right now. Uh, good on him and God bless him. Uh, but I've always felt there was something a bit more sinister about the case. Uh, the police at the time, it didn't seem to be a large inquest, you know, a long inquest, I should say. And it was over and done with in a matter of hours. You know, he took his own life, accident, accidentally drowned. I mean, what, what phrase is that, accidentally drowned? If he committed suicide, it's suicide. If it's murder, it's murder, but accidentally drowned. Does that mean he actually fell off his bike, hit his head on a rock and went under the water? That's accidental. But we know, yeah, I mean, as Vicky just said, we know he was pulled from the reservoir and he had a big hefty boulder or rock strapped around his neck with some rope. Now the rope itself, and I'll ask some questions about this with dowsing rods, but the same rope was found at Kenyon Clough Farm where he lived with his parents. So we know he brought the rope with him, and this is this is the indicator we, why the police seem to think he took his own life because they found the same rope that was wrapped around his neck also at Kenyon Clough Farm. Yeah, and that's the only reason why it was uh, it was suicide. But I don't know, something still doesn't quite sit right with me with this story. Um, and if the rods are to believe, then he obviously was murdered back in May 1930. But uh, when the coast is clear, because there's a lot of people coming my way, we'll ask some more questions and hopefully we get some more answers. So we've just been over to where we think and where the rods have told us where Ernest, obviously, his last known whereabouts were. I'm going to ask some questions now about the day itself. Ernest, had you planned to meet somebody else here at Cafe Reservoir? Did you plan to meet somebody here on the day of your death? Yes or no? Can you give me a yes or no answer, please? Did you plan to meet somebody here on the day you died? So that's a no. And is that true? Um, we don't know. That's what I'm saying. These are questions we'll never be able to answer. I'm just asking it now. Right. Ernest, just for confirmation, did you plan to meet somebody here on the day of your death? Yes or no? Yes or no, Ernest? Did you plan to meet somebody here? 
on the day you died you sadly passed away so that's enough I'm going to ask um, the rods now about the bike that Ernest had Ernest you came to Cafe Reservoir with your bike the bike that you loved did the person who murdered you also take your bike did they steal your bike it's a clear yes isn't it mm. Ernest I've got one name can you confirm if this name is the person who took your life was it a man a young man called Frank Whitworth yes or no So just to confirm, Ernest, did Frank, Worth, Frank Whitworth take your life? Yes or no? Yes or no, Ernest? Well, so, so Frank Whitworth was the guy who had his bike. Yeah, but somebody could have sold it to him. Right. Ernest, the person who took your life and who took your bike Did they also sell your bike to Frank Whitworth? Did this person sell your bike to Frank Whitworth? That's opened up like crazy. Mm. Ernest, did Frank Whitworth know this person who sold the bike? Yes or no? That's what it's saying, yeah. Just put the camera down a little bit because it's a bit high, not this. Right. Ernest, did Frank Whitworth know your murderer? Yes or no? Did he know that this person had taken your life? That's uh, that's an unsure maybe answer, isn't it? That's interesting. Ernest. Just to clarify, did Frank Whitworth know the person who took your life, yes or no? Again, so maybe. So he possibly did know, but we're not sure. Ernest, did you simply come down to the reservoir just to spend a couple of hours before you met your friend, Jerry Lord. So it's open up for yes. So we'll come down just to kill a couple of hours. Ernest. Were, now I know, I know the answer to this, so I'm not going to ask it outright, but Ernest, were you happy at work? Working for your, your on the family farm at Kenyon Club Farm. Were you happy? No. He didn't, the, the reports were, he, he, he couldn't get used to seven day working days, you know what I mean? Ernest, I've got to ask you again, I'm sorry to keep asking you. Were you murdered here at Cafe Reservoir? Yes or no? Yeah. And one final question, can you please point to where the reservoir is now, where your body was recovered from? Can you please point to the reservoir? Just turn camera that way. Yeah. So that is the reservoir. So the rods have pointed to the reservoir and it's answered the question about Frank Whitworth. That was the question I was always intrigued with. Was Frank the guy who took his bike but who murdered him? Now if Ernest and the rods are giving us the right answers, he obviously wasn't, but he may well have known about Ernest's death. It's a great question because he might have read up about Ernest's death. The guy who sold him the bike he may have confessed to Frank Whitworth about the murder. It, it's one of those questions I don't think we'll ever get to the bottom of, um, but interesting, not nevertheless. Right, I'm going to ask Ernest some more questions. Ernest, if you're still with us, again, can you please give me a yes or a no? Well, if you're here, can you give me a yes answer? Yeah, it's open straight away. Ernest, on the day of your death, when you were murdered, did a struggle take place, yes or no? Straight away, yes. Ernest, 
With regards to the police investigation, do you think the police could have done more to find your murderer? Yes or no? I mean, it's a yes, but I suppose that'd be any murder. Ernest, I don't want to sound conspiracy now, but do you think the police know, or knew more about your death than what was reported in the press at the time? Yes or no? That's a maybe, isn't it? Mm -hmm. That's a maybe. Ernest, going ahead, are you okay with me and Victoria researching even further into your case and hopefully finding you peace by bringing your murderer? Yeah, I'm going to say, to justice. But will you ever? Ernest, do you know if the answers are still out there as to who your murderer was? Are the clues out there? It's only for you. Mm. Ernest, thank you very much for coming through and talking to us. And we are really sorry for what happened back in 1930 and how it's been unsolved for all these years. We will try our best. I'm not saying we'll be able to help you with finding who, obviously, the perpetrator was. But thank you for talking to us. And uh, I, we just hope you find peace in these nice areas around here. Um, God bless, thank you for communicating. Uh, and one final time, if you are still with us here, Ernest, can you please open the rods and they open it straight away, aren't they? Mm -hmm. Which is um, which is nice. Right, Ernest, we're gonna, have to go, we're gonna have to say goodbye for now. Many thanks for talking to us. Um, we really, again, we do real, feel really sorry for what happened. We're going to go. God bless. Thank you very much for talking to us. And we will try our very best to uncover more on your story. And thank you for talking. So there we go, folks. Um, that's a short one. Uh, we always said we'd come back to, to revisit this story. Now, we've done it with the dowsing rods. Um, simply because, like I said, they're quite new to us. And I find this, the whole subject matter fascinating. And if the rods are to be believed, and we can harness the energy from people such as Ernest, you know, if the, if the energy is still in this area, the places where they sadly died, and they can control the rods via myself, you know, I do th I do think that's a possibility without being too out there. But if, if what the rods have given us, the answer is, he came down here simply to kill an hour or two before he met his friend, Jerry Lord. Something happened, he came across this pathway here, he literally made his way across here, by all accounts, two, don't know if you can see on the GoPro, but there's some people walking near a bridge, but that's the open space of the actual reservoir, which I kind of assumed he would go there, because if you look around, there's a perimeter, there's walls everywhere. So he probably would have come this way to keep clear of people. He probably rode his bike round and then stopped off over there. And that is obviously where he met his death. The rods are telling us it wasn't Frank Whitworth, which is interesting, because this guy, Frank Whitworth, ended up with Ernest's bike. Um, it's a fascinating story, it really is. As for the rods, you know, they give us the answers we were seeking. You know, Ernest was murdered, which I always had a gut feeling. It wasn't Frank Whitworth, which I kind of thought it probably would have been. But uh, this Frank Whitworth may well have known his murderer. Now, he might have known his murderer, but not realising he was a murderer, if that makes sense. He might have been an acquaintance of the guy that killed poor Ernest. Um, but whatever happened, his bike was taken. Ernest's pride and joy, his bike was taken and ended up in Whitworth's hands. Um, but it wasn't Frank Whitworth by all accounts, that was here. And to be fair to Frank Whitworth, I think from one of the snippets in the papers, he actually said he's never been to this part, you know, of the Northwest. So that's, that was quite a fascinating reply. Um, what else did Ernest give us? Like I said, he came here just to kill a couple of hours because we'd met his friend Jerry Lord at the Holding Arms pub and he was supposed to be back there for about five o'clock. Um, it kind of makes sense that he probably travelled this way around on his bike. He probably came all this way and then obviously made his way all the way around. That kind of makes sense because the arm rods and the Holding's houses it were in that distance there. 
Um, I'm not sure if the farms were there back in the day, to be honest. I'd have to look, look that up. I don't know when the armourers and aldens actually vacated this area. Um, but we're talking 1930, aren't we? So, possibly. But yeah, it's, it's an interesting one. We've got some responses from, from Ernest. Really is uh, bizarre how these rods work, to be honest. I, um, it, it flummoxes me because I'm trying my best to concentrate on the question I'm answering. So I'm trying to keep my hands steady so not to influence the rods. You know what I mean, Vic? So it kind of, to get the responses and the replies that we do, I can only presume that you've got to be in a place where the energy is still there. Now, somebody's had their life taken, maybe, or they've died in you know tragic circumstances, like an, an injury, an accident, or whatever, murder. The energy, I think, perhaps stays there in that location. So if you do something with rods or Ouija boards or something like that, and you're, you, you know, you, you're open-minded about it, who's to say that this energy can't control your, your muscle movements to some extent to get the rods to answer, or the crystals to answer your questions? And it's their way of communicating with the living. But uh, yeah, if you found this video interesting, comment down below on your thoughts. Um, it's a nice, it's a Friday morning. We've just come out um, because we thought this area would have been quiet today, but it's not, it's been busier than normal. Um, it seems like everybody's off work today. But if you did enjoy it, don't forget to comment down below. Tell us your thoughts on this case. Don't forget to visit the original video that we did on Ernest Rodwell. That'll explain more about why we're out today. You know, the reason behind coming out today. How he was murdered or how his body was found, I should say. But yeah, watch that. I'll put the links down below. But in the meantime, take care, look after yourselves. And we will be back soon with another tale from our dark but illustrious past. <laughs>